the uh, gentleman from Texas, Mr. Conseco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me first of all ask you this question. Um, prudence would dictate that if you indeed represent um, Fannie and Freddie and making sure that the mo mortgage market uh, continues to function when you took on the conservatorship, that you really represented the American people. Yet it seems to me that your act in um, extending this indemnity uh, that you were no longer representing the American people, that you were representing uh, the, the defendants in this particular case. Wouldn't it have been more prudent to allow the defendants to sue the conservatorship for indemnity than to go ahead and honor the, um, the indemnity agreement that was in place? Um, I'll, I'll, thank you, Congressman. I'm going to ask my counsel to right. respond to that question. Congressman, the difficult decision uh, that you've posited is one of a lawyer looking at the situation at hand, which is someone being uh, indemnified, and what would happen if, in fact, we had repudiated the contract. What would happen in that situation, my best estimation as a lawyer advising the agency, was that the defendants would sue us. Uh, our repudiation of contract is specifically authorized in, in HERA in 2008 to authorize them, anyone, to challenge that. Therefore, they could sue us, as provided by the statute, for which they would be advanced legal fees. The predominant court cases that I've looked at uh, is that at a time when they were being advanced fees, when there was no final action, uh, that they would, in fact, have a chance, a very strong chance, understanding what Mr. Capuano has asked us about taking that chance, that they had a very strong chance of prevailing and that we could be in extended litigation on this matter uh, with a set under Delaware law that is very, very strong. It, 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 and, and let me make this point, because I think uh, the question uh, understood, but I, I'm, well, I'm just I, trying to say advancement of legal fees is actually accorded even greater strength at times than indemnification. That, that's really but the challenge. Th there's an important yes, other concept here, if I may, Congressman. It may be secondary, but it's nonetheless critical, and I'd call the subcommittee's attention to it. And that is that when we place these companies in conservatorship and we place the American taxpayer's support behind the operations of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in conservatorship. That support is backing five and a half trillion dollars where the securities that are trading in global financial markets. We need in the conservatorships there to be talented, capable professionals that continue to operate the day-to-day -day operations of these companies. And we needed to replace a number of senior officers and the, the entire boards of directors of both companies. If, if FHFA was to take an action that would have called into question the, uh, the reliability of the government's affirmation of indemnification to these folks, because if, if things got tough, we were going to back out from it. We would not have been able to attract and retain the, uh, the talent that we brought in post-conservatorship, as well as the existing managers and staff that were there to do their important job. These individuals are subject to lawsuits today. They're subject to a wide array of government investigations. And it is, it is incumbent on us to provide the standard protections of indemnification and advancement of legal fees that I, are available. I appreciate your comments on that, but my time is a little limited here. And my, my comment on that is you would have had an opportunity to at least question the size of the legal fees and the quantity of the legal fees and at least put into issue the fact that you were doing it under protest because, after all, your main client is the taxpayer of this country and not the people that you are indemnifying. But let me go off into something else, if I may. Um, it, it, Mr. Williams and Mr. DeMarco, um, in the timeline leading up to the May 23rd, 2004 signing of comprehensive indemnification agreements with Franklin Raines and Tim Howard and uh, Leanne Spencer and Fannie Mae, on the 17th of July of 2003, the director of uh, OFEO, Armando Falcon, announced that OFEO uh, would conduct a special accounting review of Fannie Mae in testimony before the Senate Banking Committee. By January of 2004, press reports 
and market analysis uh, began to call into question Fannie Mae's accounting practices. The indemnification agreements were then signed on May 23rd of 2004, less than four months before the release of Ofeo's first report on Fannie's non-compliance which accounting um, with accounting rules. Um, the September 17, 2004 report of findings to date of the special examination of Fannie Mae stated that Fannie's um, management culture made noncompliance with accounting rules possible. Quote, the problems relating to these accounting areas differ in their specifics, but they have emerged from a culture and environment that made these problems possible. Characteristics of this culture included, uh, and it goes on. These facts call into question the timing of the signing of the comprehensive indemnification agreements. To the best of your knowledge, did Fannie Mae executives request new indemnification agreements because they feared their accounting misdeeds would soon be exposed by OFAO investigation? Uh, do you know that? Do you have an answer to that? Congressman, yes, let me answer that. The board of directors at the time had undertaken a review of their indemnification agreement and had decided to issue a standard agreement for all officers. Uh, Mr. Raines, Mr. Howard, and Ms. Spencer already had indemnification agreements in place. Mr. Howard's from 1987, Mr. Raines from 1991, and Ms. Spencer from 1993. So all you did was just renew them in this short of period of time? The board, the board of directors, I was not on the board at the time, but the board of directors wanted to issue standard indemnification agreements. They had been uh, custom or unique to each individual, and they wanted standard agreements. And it just seems odd that these new indemnification agreements were, la were signed less than four months before their um, regulator issued a report blaming senior management for mismanaging, mismanaging earning statements given the questions about the motivation of Reins et al. to seek new indemnification agreements. Do you still believe that it is appropriate to advance fees for these individuals given their egregious conduct? Congressman, the agreements have been in place since, uh, since 2004, and as both Mr. DeMarco and I have said, the, we, uh, do it, we have to advance the fees in these right. legal agreements. Thank you, sir. I, my time has expired. Thank you, gentlemen.